Hello everybody, welcome to the Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. Guess what we're all doing today? We're making Botham, Gotham great again, or Botham, whatever you want to call it. Boom, there it is. Thank you so much for supporting the show, everybody. Um, I want to talk about this. I just found this speech. A uh, hundred years ago, Eugene Debs gave an anti-war speech that landed him in prison. Pretty amazing. This guy was running for office. Uh, he was a socialist that was running on a complete anti-war campaign. World War I had started in 1917 under Woodrow Wilson, and this guy ran... I'm going to read excerpts from his act, or from his act. <laughs> Comedian, that's why I think everyone's an act. <laughs> Everything's got an act. Um, from his, uh, one of his, the main speech that got him arrested. What led up to that? But it really shows you this heavy, heavy anti-war socialist movement at the turn of the last century. And why we need to bring it back. In 1920, Eugene Victor Debs ran for president from a cell in a federal prison in Atlanta for a speech opposing World War I that he gave based on June 8th, 18th, 1918. So it was over 100 years ago. Just literally almost 100 years ago, I gave this speech on June 18th that landed him in prison and he ran for president, Right? Despite his imprisonment, Debs received 913,664 votes, which was 3.4% of the total. That's pretty significant, considering the population of the country back then was, I think, was about 100, 150 million people, where it's at 300 million today. In his speech, the Socialist Party leader told the packed crowd at a park in Canton, Ohio, you need to know that you are good for something more than slavery and cannon fodder. He said this in 1918. I've talked about this a lot because we need to know our history. Anti-war movement didn't start in the 60s. We'd like to think it did, but it didn't. World War I was referred to as Wall Street's war. Okay, Woodrow Wilson hired this guy, George Creel, to come up with the Creel Commission, which basically was a marketing department to get America on. We started this in 1915, to get America on. 1915, the majority of the country did not want to go into World War I. They called it Wall Street's War. Why are we fighting in Europe? There's no reason for this. Also too, back in that era, Mother's Day, the first ever Mother's Day was World War I mothers whose sons had died over there saying it was an anti-war rally. The first Mother's Day was an anti-war rally. So here's what happened to Eugene Victor Debs, right? Here's what the, the history of why he got, why was he imprisoned for an anti-war speech. Why was he in prison for saying things like, you're good for something more than slavery and cannon fodder? Well, in 1917, President Woodrow Wilson persuaded Congress to declare war on Jim Germany and its allies. That move uh, catalyzed opposition from within Congress led by Robert LaFolliette of Wisconsin and by civil libertarians, religious pacifists, and socialists led by Debs. Two months later, Congress passed the Espionage Act, hmm. which made it illegal to incite active opposition to U.S. involvement in the war. Federal agents arrested scores of socialists and other dissidents. Though ill, the 62-year-old Debs crisscrossed the country delivering a series of anti-war speeches. The Canton speech proved to be his last oration before land heading to prison. See what Wilson did? Pass the Espionage Act. Anyone that's against this war, is in, it's treason. Does that sound familiar? Did we hear that? Where have we heard that before? Oh, right, after 9-11. You better be a patriot. You better be a patriot. Otherwise, you must be against America. And now we're seeing it in the insanity of the post-Trump era. When Tulsi Gabbard says we shouldn't be going into a, an invention, interventionist war in Syria, Howard Dean says she should leave Congress.
I remember hearing an interview with a Congressional Medal of Honor winner from Vietnam. And he said, you know, protesting the, the, the warrior is wrong. You know, he had to deal with that. People calling soldiers baby killers and stuff like that after, world, after Vietnam. And he said, but we should always protest war. He goes, the day the human race doesn't protest war, we're in trouble. This is a Congressional Medal of Honor winner saying this. In his speech, this is what, this is what excerpts from his speech in Canton, Ohio on June 18th, 2008, or excuse me, 1918, 100 years ago. Debs told the crowd, a Socialist Party gathering that was infiltrated by U.S. agents, that he was aware that he had to speak carefully to avoid federal prosecution. The master class has always declared the wars. The subject class has always fought the battles, Debs said. The master class has had to gain and the master class, excuse me, has had all to gain and nothing to lose, while the subject class has had nothing to gain and all to lose, especially their lives. They have always taught and trained you to believe it to be your patriotic duty to go to war and to have yourselves slaughtered at their command. But in all the history of the world, you, the people, have never had a voice in declaring war. And strange and certainly as it, as it appears, no war by any nation in any age has ever been declared by the people. Wow, he said this in 1918. The ruling class has no problem sending your sons and now daughters. Back then, women couldn't go die in wars, but now men, now you can. <laughs> There's some great equality in this capitalist uh, kleptocracy. Women can go die in nonsensical corporate wars by the ruling class. And let me emphasize the fact, and it cannot be repeated too often, that the working class who fight all the battles, the working class who make the supreme sacrifices, the working class who freely shed their blood and furnish the corpses have never yet had a voice in either declaring war or making peace. It is the ruling class that invariably does both. They alone declare war and they alone make peace. These are the gentry who are today wrapped up in the American flag, who shout their claim from their housetops that they are the only patriots, and who have their magnifying glasses in hand, scanning the country for evidence of disloyalty, eager to appear the brand of treason to the men who dare to even whisper their opposition to the junker rule in the United States. No wonder Sam Johnson declared that patriotism is the last refuge of the scoundrel, he must have had this Wall Street gentry in mind, or at least their prototypes, for in every age it has been the tyrant, the oppressor, and the exploiter who has wrapped himself in the cloak of patriotism, or religion, or both, to deceive and overawe the people. <sighs> A hundred years later, these words are more on point than ever. More on point than ever. On Christmas Day 1921, President Warren G. Harding, would, who defeated Wilson apparently, a Republican freed Debs and 23 other prisoners of conscience. By the time they were released, the socialist movement that Debs had helped build was dead, a victim of government repression and internal fractional fighting between opponents and supporters of the new Bolshevik regime in Russia. See what they did when the Bolsheviks took over in Russia, that's when they end, end part of this plan here in America because we were against, the socialists were against World War I. That's when the demonizing of the socialists, how it was used. You Bolshevik, the Bolsheviks are taking your freedom. And then that became Soviets and then socialist Soviet. We made that the same thing. So that it's easy to sell to Americans that socialists that just really just want to put the means of production in the hands of the worker <laughs> or somehow evil Bolshevik Soviets that want to come take your freedom. 
Debs died in 1926, but many of the ideas that Debs and the Socialist Party championed, including women's suffrage, child labor laws, unemployment relief, public works jobs, social security, a minimum wage, and others took hold after his death. It's why we need a real third party and it needs to be focused on labor. There he is, 62-year-old man in Canton, Ohio. Boy, he's a threat. Definitely need to lock this guy up. Look who's in the audience. Women, bunch of women, men. This guy was considered, uh, he, he, this, this speech was considered espionage for wanting peace. For saying the working class has never had a say in what wars are fought and when, they're, when wars are ended. They never have a say. We never get a say in it. We never get a say. We didn't get a say 100 years ago. We certainly don't have a say now. And now their tactics are even more sophisticated. What with the likes of the NSA. So we need to be anti-war. We need to be pro-peace. And we need a Green New Deal because we don't have the time. But they've been doing this in America for a hundred years. Thank you for watching The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. Please support the show at Patreon, which the link is below. Tour dates, we're adding shows to the November Northern California Progressive Comedy Tour. Also, we're coming to Florida in January. We've already got the Orlando ticket link there, so start getting your tickets. Progressive Comedy Tour is coming to Florida in January of 2019. Thanks for watching.